welcome to a different style of episode of Just Checking In, which is obviously raising awareness for wellness and mental health during this awful time for the world. I'm joined today by folk pop duo Toby and Pip, who will be sharing their story. This episode speaks about Pip's side of the story on what it was like to be pregnant in a pandemic, then the steps that come after, as well as the duo's thoughts on wellness and fitness. The first question that I had written down was, thousands of women were left with the dilemma of attending scans and appointments on their own during the pandemic. Did this happen to you both? Basically, I had my 12 week scan just as we were about to go into lockdown. It was kind of in early March, mid mid March. It was it was quite funny. So I'd kind of been in, been in the office, been at work and kind of been trying to hide this pregnancy for the first three months. <laughs> and um, and then I was like, OK, my, my 12 week scan. Brilliant. OK, that's going to be on Tuesday. But then on Monday, they sent everybody home. So I didn't get a chance to tell all my colleagues. And actually, by the time that I uh, I went off for maternity leave, quite a few people didn't even know that I was pregnant because I didn't work with them. Gosh. And or if I do work with them, you only kind of see them from there upwards on, on, on <laughs> yeah. the they had no idea. So the 12 week scan was right at the beginning of the whole pandemic we were really fortunate that Toby was able to come to that one um, because it was right right at the beginning and that is you know that's the really scary one that's the one where okay is this gonna is this gonna work is this is everything okay but then after that I had to do everything on my own the (laughs) the 20 week scan which is when you find out the gender Mm -hmm. um Toby wasn't allowed to come I sort of called Toby from the room and um the sonographer told us together yeah but we weren't allowed to do a video call so we weren't allowed to sort of see each other's reactions or anything it was a bit strange Mm. you know it's it was what it was yeah yeah. Um, and then all the other appointments and stuff for the first pregnancy I did all of those alone anyway so that was that was fine it was just that that major scan that it was shocked the system was yeah yeah we didn't find out uh the baby sex the first time so we did surprise the first time so oh, yeah exactly this time. but then there was of course this whole fear throughout the entire pregnancy of oh my god is he not going to be allowed into the room while i'm actually having the baby mm. yeah. i do know several people who had to give birth on their own oh my god. um yeah which is awful yeah. and then you know we've got other people who had to go into hospital early in the early stages of labour and spend days and days on their own yeah, going through labour, which is just which is just awful. Yeah. We're so I mean, we're so fortunate that it was a straightforward pregnancy and that also it was the second pregnancy as well. Because the right. other thing is that you know, I, I knew what I knew what to expect, which is amazing. With the second pregnancy anyway, you get fewer appointments, but they just like, you know, my I didn't see anybody until I was 28 weeks, which is what, six months or so. Yeah. Other, other than the scan. I didn't see a midwife. I had a couple of phone calls, but you know, like nobody took my blood pressure. Nobody kind of checked in to mm. to see how I was doing physically, other than those two scans, which is when. But they, they don't do blood pressure and stuff at like those. It's a bit more of a medieval pregnancy. Fact, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it was just like got to twenty eight weeks. It's like, is everything okay? I don't know. I kind of just. How did you feel with the pregnancy pro- process? How how was your m- mental health like? How did it take a toll on that? How did you feel basically? So there were kind of a few a mixed few things. As I say, second pregnancy just made all of the difference. Yeah, because I remember having so much more anxiety in the first one just because I was like, oh, you know what what is this you know (laughs) this is scary (laughs) there there were a few things that actually the pandemic made kind of the fact that we had to be at home a lot yeah actually help things in a few in in a few ways so the fact that the toby was always around so if i was having any sort of kind of like oh moments he was always there which is wonderful um and also there to help look after josie our other little girl as well i was working but i wasn't having to commute Right. And that is a huge, huge difference, especially like we live in London. It takes an hour and a quarter for me to get to my office. Wow. Uh, we would have had to, I would have had to have been on the tube. It's a sweaty, that. horrible, smelly tube in the yeah. height of summer. <laughs> so for me, actually, to not have to travel in and not have to kind of go through all of that was a huge mental relief. But then on the other side of things, we're bringing a new life into a very, very crazy world, which is a huge thing. And you're just like, oh, my God. God, what you know is this? Is this a wise thing to be doing? Yeah. Um, but on the other hand, you know, it talk, talking about after pregnancy and then going through lockdowns and everything like that. Yeah. 
the fact that I've been on maternity leave, so I haven't been having to try and work at the same time as look after children is amazing. You know, we've got so many friends and we know so many people who are just having this awful struggle of having to try and kind of look after the well-being of their children and educate, educate them. them and keep them, their brains busy and everything. Keep their brains busy as well as try and hold down a job as well. I mean, it's... Yeah. Superheroes. You know, the superheroes. Yeah. We, kill, <laughs> we feel incredibly fortunate to that sort of timing has worked out for us. Question for Toby. What was it like for you seeing Pip go through all of this? I think, yeah, because like Pip said, because it's a second baby, um, it was definitely, she was more confident. She was kind of familiar with all the symptoms and signs and... <laughs> And he was uh, very active in in her tummy, so that was uh, that was reassuring as well. A lot yeah. of movement, a lot of kicking around, almost too much actually. He was keeping you awake, wasn't he? <laughs> but yeah, it was a shame to miss out on that twenty week scan appointment. Was a bit of a shame. Yeah, it was okay for me, really. I, I mean, I was just trying to be as supportive as I could, really. That's all you can do. Awesome. Yeah. Kit was born in that little window where it was things have been getting better for a while and so therefore the NHS was like okay we can start letting people back in for um, the births and stuff and uh, yeah. allowing people to have their birth partners there. It was in September wasn't it yeah. And it was just before things got bad again and they started not yeah. being able to be there quite so much and then the other thing was that the the time the, the labour labour and birth first time round was a really really long process that took like 48 hours or something uh second time it was all done in five hours yeah, um, wow. and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we were at the hospital for less than an hour so there was like there was no oh. way that they weren't going to be able to allow it to- i mean we were lucky it happened on a sunday so toby was able to find somewhere to park yeah. you know it's just like <laughs> yeah. you know he would have missed it because it was so quick rather than um yeah, covid really things quick. so gosh if it was that easy for everyone don't don't get me wrong not easy <laughs> <laughs> not easy just quick yeah. <laughs> did you guys are you like in sort of like a, a routine now that is working really well for your your mental health and your wellness and obviously raising your children are you like is there any tips for anyone out there that's struggling with getting in a sort of routine and being motivated yeah for me i've been uh i, I was very lucky timing wise i built a gym in our garage in 2019 so that's been a little project of mine to kind of do that up so that's been a real savior for me doing these crazy times just kind of trying to get out there and and i've been trying to do it every day just go out for at least like 20 minutes half an hour if, if not more and just trying to run a mile every day that's kind of been yeah, my goal. commitment thing so that's been really helpful for me and i've definitely felt a lot better for it um mm. and i've always struggled with weight issues been better over the last couple of years i've did uh just changed a few things and yeah just trying to do do that regularly has been really helpful for, for for my sort of well-being yeah i think routine is just so important we're all creatures of habit really and we all need to have routines otherwise we things can slide it can really affect you mentally we're fortunate in that we have children and if you don't have a routine with children then <laughs> nothing <laughs> nothing works <laughs> so that's automatically put us into one which is yeah. really really good the other thing with having children is that you need they need to run around so it gets us out of the house at least once a day and we just go and kind of blow some air through our lungs and it might only be a trip to the playground but it does it does get you out and i think that's really helpful in terms of mental health yeah i'd echo that yeah i think it's really important to have uh, sort of structure and routine to your day and that kind of yeah Hello. Hello. Coming to join us. <laughs> I'd add in um, trying to sort of be mindful of your alcohol intake, I'd suggest as well. Okay, I yeah. think that's quite important. I think people forget that alcohol is a depressant. But yeah, just I think that's something for me as well. I've definitely, I definitely feel the effects of alcohol the next day and feel a bit like lethargic and things. And so I find I feel much healthier if I, if I have a, a good stretch of two or three days without anything. So yeah, I mean, Pip's been really good over the last few years of, of not drinking during the week. That's mm -hmm. been her rule. Yeah. I'm only drinking on uh, non-school nights, so sort of Friday, Saturday. There's definitely mm -hmm. been periods during lockdown where I've kind of hit the ciders or the wine every every night for a few nights and sort of been like, oh, mm -hmm. not feeling great this week. In the spring, <laughs> and the sun was out. Yeah, yeah, but also the thing with that is that I've not really been drinking at all obviously yeah so not only if toby's done a, a few days where he's had a few in a row yeah he's also kind of doing it on his own oh yeah that's so strange yeah thing. which is yeah. Drinking well, i think i've always said social can't, can't it really yeah well i've i've sort of i sort of find it funny this whole uh um i've got a, a poker night i play with friends 
on a Friday okay. and we, we, we have a few drinks and we play online and we Zoom in a big oh, group. That's cool. And uh, I think a lot of people have been doing sort of Zoom parties and Zoom drinking. And there's this sort of weird, weird phenomenon where at the end of your night of drinking on Zoom, you kind of, instead of having the the, the fresh air and the, the, the journey home to sober you up, you just sort of suddenly you're bang, everyone's <laughs> yeah. gone. You're drunk and alone in a room. And it's just this sort of bizarre sensation of uh, being suddenly drunk and alone, <laughs> uh, which you don't really have in real life because you have a bit of sobering up time to get that home. and. Great. And my last question was uh, really if for, for any pregnant people out there, what what's some advice to, to them to, to help get through this this lockdown? What would you give them? You need to make time to if you if you've got children already, you've got to make time to prioritize yourself. It's so busy, you know, and like you know, I, I struggle to have a shower every day. Yeah. And it's one of my things that you know if I'm really working on self love, it's to <laughs> I make sure I have a shower. Talking. You need to have a network around you. If you can go out and have a, have a walk with someone, then brilliant. But just, you know, make sure that you've got a network of people who you can reach out to and people who make you laugh as well as people who you can talk, talk the meaning to. I mean, not laughter is just so important. Medicine, isn't it? And then I think just doing a bit of exercise. I did for, for this pregnancy, I did loads of yoga in, in the living room. And um, my friend Claire is a pregnancy yoga teacher and she just set up she's got a few friends who are pregnant at the time and set up a Friday morning um yoga session and we all just joined in and she was like I don't need any money for it you know just pay some money to charity um I think it was the Tussle Trust because obviously that is incredibly needed at the moment so lots of yoga and getting out the house you know it's if you stay in the house for like a couple of days it's amazing the difference that you feel when you just go outside and just walk around for a little bit even if the weather's not brilliant just go and see some trees and then just make time to do stuff that you love like we we love music we love listening to music we love playing music so we it's it's been a feature all the way through our all the way through the pandemic is that we just grab our guitars and sit down and play it's wonderful it's a huge boost to our mental health yeah definitely yeah music plays a big role in wellness and health for us i think and Mm -hmm. just kind of feeling good and Tell, tell our viewers a bit about your music. Where can we find you on all the uh, the platforms and all that? You can check out our website on tobyandpip.com. We're on social media. It's forward slash Toby and Pip everywhere, apart from Instagram, where we are Toby Pip, because some Jack Russells stole Toby and Pip. And yeah, so and we're on Spotify and uh, Apple Music and all that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we've got our three singles out. We need to get a move on with our next single, which we're going to hopefully get out in the next couple of months. Lots of tunes in the pipeline, having lots of fun pl- playing at home and practicing and working on things thank you so much for joining me for the zoom call it's been great to uh, have a good catch up yeah, yeah. lovely to chat Chloe. thank you <laughs>